everybody. Hi, friends. Well, from cloudy but lovely Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up later on the show, Dan, we're going to be talking about Lent since it is the Lenten season. Welcome, y'all. <laughs> I hope everybody went and gave up some stuff. Yeah, and, we're, and, and that's, that's what we're going to be talking about mainly. It's like the idea of of giving stuff up and like why that resonates to humans. Right. Yeah. Like, I, th- I like even on a larger scale than just Lent, mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're going to get to some stuff that may, that, that you may be doing <laughs> listener. <laughs> and we might just make fun of you for it. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, indeed. Um, but first we have some stories from the week, uh, things going on in the world that we should probably talk about. I want to start with this one from, uh, Texas, Dan. Okay. Uh, where a lawmaker, a legislator, mm. um, has authored a bill that would restrict drag performances and uh, quite, quite int- like severely, right? Basically saying that drag, drag would be sort of have to be limited to businesses that are sexually oriented, right? <laughs> Because it is such a sec, always a such a sexual performance. Yeah. Um, like at its worst, it's suggestive, right? And most <laughs> of the time, it's just people lip syncing in clothing that they that that this guy, you know, that the conservatives don't think they should be wearing. Yeah, it is all about drag. Like, <laughs> like the whole point of drag is that they are in clothes. <laughs> How sexual is that? <laughs> it's it falls apart if they're naked. Um, yeah. So anyway, so he's um, somebody found something interesting um, <laughs> from his past. Uh, as you're about we, to shock me, we, I know for a fact <laughs> I am about to be just completely on the caught floor. Unawares. On the floor, Dan. I guarantee it. Uh, Nate Schatzline, that's his name. He, of course, yeah. he's a Republican. Right. Lawmaker, yeah. Texas. Again, somebody posted on uh, Twitter, I want to say a video from his college days, um, a 90 second video, uh, skipping, running and dancing in a park while wearing a black sequin dress and uh, sort of a red eye mask is how they was what pedophile. <laughs> Um, and we know it's him because at the end of the video, the, the, the characters are credited. The, <laughs> so it, it says it has his name at the end. Uh, his character is, was called the Virgin. Um, mm. during the video, the song sexy lady is playing. And, uh, I watched five seconds of the converting and just stopped because I knew what I knew what it was. And yeah. it's, um, I wouldn't. It is drag in that he is dressed up in female dress. Which is literally the only way that these guys would know to describe drag. (laughs) Like, like drag is so much more than that. But if you ask any of these guys what drag is, right. How are they going to get beyond just the question of like what clothing they're wearing? Right. Like what gendered clothing? Yeah. He says it was for a theater project. He says, this is a tweet. So he, he's admitting it's him. Right. Right. Um, because that's the way you handle these things is you don't, you don't deny it. You, you just go, you, you, you instead turn the table and you go, y'all really going crazy over me wearing a dress as a joke back in school for a theater project. Yeah. That's not a sexually explicit drag show. LOL. Y'all will twist anything. But once again, as we were saying about most drag is that it's not, it's not sexually explicit, right? Right. It is a performance. It's also frequently for humor. Yeah. AKA. That's true. A joke. (laughs) So, I mean, he definitely was in, in drag, right? Yeah. I would not, I don't know that this is enough to say that he was a drag performer, and that would be an insult to drag performers, <laughs> and I won't have that. Um, but anyway, it, it, it like of course 
of course the person who's trying to ban drag. Like, how do these people not look into their past and go, you know what? Maybe I should let somebody else do this one. You, right. Like, you know what might not look yeah. great? Yeah. Is if that video sort of emerged, which I never even was in control of. Right. Right. His, his legislation is trying to amend the Texas business and commerce code uh, to define a venue that hosts a drag performance and authorizes on-premise consumption of alcoholic beverages as a sexually oriented business. Such businesses, according to the state code, may not allow an individual younger than 18 years old to enter. Let's see. The, it also defines a drag performance as, quote, a performance in which a performer exhibits a gender identity that is different from the performer's gender assigned at birth using clothing, makeup, or other physical markers and sings, lip syncs, dances, or otherwise performs before an audience for entertainment. So literally, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I, right now I'm trying to think of a play mm. that, that like, a be- there are beloved plays, nothing's jumping to mind right now, where, where, people dress like Shakespeare Mm. 12th night Mm. cannot be performed in, in a, like in under his thing, you couldn't do 12th (laughs) night. You should, you should point this out. You should get in touch with them. No, I mean like (laughs) for realsies. It also states that sexually oriented businesses can be, can be categorized as a nightclub bar restaurant or other commercial enterprise, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, that provides an audience of two or more. Um, so you can perform for one person that's allowed. Oh, okay. <laughs> if it's just, if it's just, uh, my sexy performances one-on-one, then we're okay. Then you're okay. You can dress however you like, Dan. Oh my God. It, it's just, I don't know why they get away with it because it's so obviously stupid Yeah, and Nothing that they do holds up to any amount of scrutiny, right. like zero level of scrutiny. And yet, uh, and yet they still, we, we somehow they still get away with this bullshit. Cause there are enough people who watch Fox news every night and who listen to the crazy podcasts and online programs yeah. right that like and don't that listen just, to anything else and yeah they're completely refuse stuck. to consume anything and else people you know like they yes they refuse to <laughs> watch any or listen to anything else and probably not like people with the greatest critical thinking skills <laughs> to begin with like and i don't mean offense by that but just like like probably not like no gullible people right you can't look like you can't have this bad of a take on drag, which is like so deeply innocuous as yeah. to be ridiculous. Right. And be a good thinker. <laughs> it's just dumb. Okay. All right. I'm mad. Uh, I'm going to bring us back here to our fair, our beloved state where, oh. uh, where you know, look. The religious idiots aren't confined to the Bible Belt here in no. these United States, you guys. No. We've got them here. We're doing great. Yeah. Um, They're also in the Mormon Belt. Yeah, exactly. So you and I talked a while back. Uh, this was maybe a year ago or something about how the Mormon church was. Maybe it wasn't even that long. Anyway, the Mormon church was in some trouble because their clergy was protecting abusers yeah. who would who who would come to them uh-huh and rather and there was this whole hotline thing that they would call that was all about protecting the church rather than protecting any victims and right you know it, this is a big problem and it's a problem that's not that's not uh just a problem for mormons it's a problem for you know cat the catholic church has confessional and you know you go and you confess to a priest and then the priest has heard that you are confessing that you abuse your kids and your wife or whatever, mm-hmm. and they do nothing. Right. And, you know, there are laws, there are mandatory reporting laws for teachers, for doctors, for blah, blah, blah. Right. And, you know, all of these things. And so uh, so a movement started, you know, got got really heated to get some mandatory reporting laws for clergy. Here in, Which in Utah. Only makes sense. 
Uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense. That is, you know, these are these clergy are sort of like ostensibly tasked mm-hmm. with the safety and well being of their flock. Right. Uh, so like this seems like a no brainer, easy. Uh, of course it failed. Of course it failed. Yeah. Um. It it didn't it didn't even make it out of committee. I don't think it's. Uh, oh, it's really and, sick. And the lawmakers were very clear that this was due to pressure from these religions, these churches, mostly the LDS Church, but also the Catholic Church, hmm. who desperately don't want it. And that that to me is. I just don't get it's it. It's so indicative of where their mindset is. We would rather protect the penitence of the perpetrator than the safety of the victims. Yeah. And that you can't have more fucked up priorities than that. Yeah. A, a protecting also this, you know, adult man. <laughs> yeah. Literally, he, literally a perpetrator. Right. Yeah. And there are a victims. Per, a person who could somebody in a position of power over these victims. That's who they're protecting. Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. And it's, and yeah, this a person who should who by all accounts should very easily be able to protect themselves. It it also seems f- weird because it seems like to me, like let's say, I mean, I think there might be a couple things that that the LDS church and any of these churches is concerned about because if their clergy is having to go out and report it to the authorities every single time somebody admits or or confesses, right? Right. Now it's also public record. Mm. And now we know, we will know how prevalent the problem actually is within their communities. That's true. I I think I honest to God, I think they're, they're in, in large part protecting their own image. Because they don't want these stories out there of, you know, because, because it will be, you know, it was, that that will be part of the story is that it was reported through the church and they don't want any part of it. If they handled it well, they could look like the heroes of that story. Then they don't see it that way, but they don't want, they don't want to be the heroes of that Mm -hmm. story. They want, they want to be. Mormons are perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. They would rather have a some bullshit narrative about their perfection as a as a uh, overall church. Yeah. Then look at how quickly we leap into action to protect children or 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 you know the vulnerable. Yeah. Which is such a better image, <laughs> right? Than being perfect, right? Yeah. And infallible because we all know they're infallible, that they're so infallible. Right? <laughs> they're very, yeah, they're, they're really killing it out there. <laughs> all righty. Uh, Dan. Yeah. Down there in Australia. Oh. Um, we, you know, we, we sometimes get some interesting fun news out of Australia. <laughs> this one's specifically from Victoria. Um, that's the state that Melbourne is in. Mm. And uh, they had had up to not too long ago, sort of an official in school religious education program. Right. Sure. Now their schools by law are secular. So I, I'm gathering that these were educating. It, it wasn't indoctrination maybe in sort of the final years of this, of this program, but more sort of education about religions is Uh, kind of what I'm gathering. I'm not 100% sure. I'd love to hear from Australian listeners, but in 2013, nearly 93,000 students in Victoria were enrolled in the the special religious instruction uh, classes, which, uh, included groups as uh, so education on Christianity, Islam, Judaism, uh, Buddhism, or Baha'i. So it sounds like you could <laughs> kind of just like, Oh, I want to learn about X, right? Something tells me that the Baha'i segment wasn't given as much weight as perhaps the Christian. <laughs> like I'm just guessing here, 
But I'm going to guess that they gloss right over Baha'i yeah. no, to I, get back to Jesus as quickly as they possibly can. I do think, though, that you, as it was for the Baha'i students, they would go to the oh. Baha'i class, I think. I think. I don't know how this worked, to be honest. <laughs> But anyway, we are not Australians. We're not Australians. But uh, there were government changes that started in uh, 2011 that required parents to opt their children into the classes. Ah. Um, and then under um, some changes that came subsequently to that, they shifted the classes to either lunchtime or outside of like actual official school hours, <laughs> um, which means that there are when there were once 93,000 students enrolled, there are now fewer than 1,000. Yeah. Uh, so they've, they've done a very good job <laughs> squashing their religious education program. And this also coincides with um, the number of Australians in general who identify as Christian, uh, which has fallen from 61% in 2011 to 44% in 2021. Oh, good job. And everybody. 42% of uh Victorians, which I'd never heard people from Victoria called Victorians before, but that makes mm. sense. Um sure. even though in my head that's you know, my great grandparents, <laughs> but uh 42% of Victorians said they had no religion at all according to the 2021 that's, census. So That's astoundingly great. <sighs> Good God. Like, how do we... Well done, Aussies. Can I move to Melbourne? How does this happen? Literally, you guys, help us move <laughs> down under. Maybe not now, because it's about to be winter for you guys, and we just suffered <laughs> through one of those. We, we don't need another. We only want to immigrate ne once but by it's, fall. Once it's summer for you. By yeah. fall, we want to be in <laughs> New Zealand, Australia, somewhere down there. Help us do this. <sighs> Oh my God. Raise the money. We'll, we'll come. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah, that sounds that sounds much better. Uh, All right. Doesn't it though? Meanwhile, here in these United States, uh, the grand recovery from the Trump era continues uh, <laughs> as we as we reel it, it back as many like, of Yeah, it feels like recovery, doesn't it? Like yeah. we're still healing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. We there's still so many surgeries that we have left to do. It feels like we got into the worst car accident of all time. And now it's just like we're reconstructing reconstruction. That's oh, the there we go. Okay. We're, we're rebuilding. We're, reconst we're rebuilding America. We can Make America America again. <laughs> I mean, maybe we can do a little better than just what America has been. Anyway, one of the things that's that's being looked at is a, a, a Trump era rule called the free inquiry rule. Okay. Uh, and it's funny because I read several articles about this and depending on the, uh, the source, man, nobody wanted to really dive into what this rule did. Uh, uh largely what it was, it was explicitly about, uh, institutes of higher education. Okay. Uh, that receive federal grants, federal funding. And it is about, I mean, if, if, if you hear the Trump administration or right-wing Christians uh, talking about it, all it's about is making sure that groups are free to practice their own religion on campus. Uh, okay. And we're talking about like clubs and, and religious groups that are campus affiliated. Okay. But what a lot of other people are saying, uh, if you're on the left is that it's about the right to discriminate against students that they don't like. Gay, LGBTQ, right. uh, margin, other marginalized groups. You know, we are, the rule is about protecting your right to infringe on their rights. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to admit, I am of two minds about this. Because if it's a religious group, I can I don't know. Do they have the right to be hateful in their own little group or do they not because uh, the, because the federal government is funding and they've, they've got to go off campus to be as shitty as they want to be. Um, well, I mean, preferably they wouldn't be on campus for, 
any just, of it. Why why are you yeah, exactly. Why right? are like so like you'd yeah, think they'd educate the hate out of them eventually, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um that's um yeah, but no, they, they shouldn't you, they just shouldn't be on campus. No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Um like these groups because we're talking about public schools. I, I mean this I think this also applies to not public schools, but that that still get like grants from the from the education department, et cetera. Okay, so even university level type of stuff. Or is that what yeah. we're talking about? Yeah. I thought you were talking about high schools. No, 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 no. We're we're in second we're in uh, uh oh. Higher oh, education. I missed that somehow. I'm sorry. Yeah. So we're talking about higher education stuff. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit more lenient as to like what's allowed on campus, obviously, for college students in my thinking. Yeah, me too. So if there's I'm, like religious groups on campus, I mean, it. I think we need some kind of mechanism for all of them to make sure not just the religious ones, because who cares, right? But like yeah. all the per, all the clubs, all the weird little organizations on campus, like they should all be free of hate. Right. Yeah. It does seem like like, go, yeah, go do that somewhere else. Yeah. If, if like, you, if you're going to insist on doing that, it shouldn't be welcome there. Or I, I mean, uh, I don't it, know. Like, yeah, it's I, tricky. I like, think it's tricky. I, I, I think a lot of people on the left don't think it's tricky. Um, oh, but I, right. But, but I think, I, I, I think that like, just, you know, if this is just a club that is that wants to be able to say, well, you know, we believe that LGBTQ that you know homosexuality is against God's order. So all they're doing is provide the university or college or whatever is only providing space. I guess. Is there funding coming from the school for these programs? Probably. To some, some limited degree to yeah. print some banners, like posters and whatnot. I don't know. I don't know how this all works. I, but I, I like literally I had to dig and dig just to find sort of what they're really on about. The The truth of the matter is that the Department of Education has looked into it, uh, has done a whole study about it. And actually it's kind of just onerous on them for a problem that doesn't seem to exist. Like they have to look into, uh, you know, complaints about we're not allowed to believe what we believe. And it doesn't seem to be that anything's actually happening. Like this isn't a problem on on campuses here, here in the U.S. So that's the main thing that they're saying is like this is really onerous on us and there's nothing there. There's no there there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to think a little bit more about it. In general, I don't know. I think it's so dicey, like, to start regulating what people say, right? Yeah. But if it's and hate, beliefs. and if it's hate speech, there's a line there, right? Right. And, and, and like, I don't know that it's... Here's where it gets rough, is that if it's, you know, some really conservative religious group... And they don't, be, they, they believe that homosexuality is a sin, right? Like is saying that something is a sin against their God, right? Right. Is that hateful? And, and I know a it, lot or, of people would say that is hate, right? Yeah. Um, but it's, they're trying to believe their magic sky daddy, right? <laughs> right. And I don't believe in their magic sky daddy. And right? frankly, the so, way that we talk about them could be considered hate too. I'm willing to own that. I strongly dislike them. Yeah. So <laughs> I hate, I hate a lot of how they like how they, the effect that they have on society. Yeah. I mean, I have a hard they time say saying the same thing about them. them. Yeah. But I, um, I do strongly, strongly dislike them. And where's the line? Right. Yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. I think it's tricky. That's what I'm getting. You're at. saying it's tricky know. and we're not taking an official stance. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And people can write into us and get mad or 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 set us straight and tell yeah. us why why this isn't as yeah, tricky. Yeah, what are we not seeing here? Yeah. Because there's probably something we're not seeing. And I'm open to that. So, okay. All right. All right. Well, Dan. Yeah. Oh, speaking of hate. Over there in Iowa, which is a state that I would like to remind everybody 
was one of the first to legalize gay marriage. Remember no that? Way. Remember back yeah. in the day? I think mm-hmm. it was what? Who? Vermont? New Hampshire? No, Vermont. It was Vermont, right? Was the first? I don't remember. I don't remember. I know either. New York did it early. Yeah. I don't think New Hampshire. New Hampshire is weird. Um, sorry, New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> but Iowa was one of the big surprises because it felt right. it was so middle America and it was just like, what? But they, on a state level, legalized uh, gay marriage. Well, now there is a proposal in their um, that's making their way through their legislature at the moment. We'll see how far it goes before more reasonable voices speak up. But for now, it's it's in there. It's getting consideration to ban same sex marriage mm. in Iowa. Now, of course, you know we have a Supreme Court ruling that from 2015 that legalizes. Uh, same-sex marriage nationwide right um and then of course we also have last year's law f- that made its way through the u.s congress and into law uh that protects uh gay marriage and um interracial marriage mm. on a federal level so this this wouldn't immediately be legal if they decided to ban same-sex marriage because there are other federal things that are protecting the right currently at least um but nonetheless um they're they're going to try they're going to try to get it on the books and they want to ban it through amendment so the process is right now they're doing this resolution they're trying to get it to pass um and then it would go to the people it sounds like in order to put it into the their state constitution um which is funny because i mean so what they're trying to do is part of the same, this plan. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to shoot it up to our current uh, Supreme court. Right. Which would be a mess. Um, Which is dangerous for us. It's It's it's, like, well, me specifically when you say us, but um, I mean, those of us who care (laughs) about, I know what you mean to our side inequality. Yeah. Um, But specifically, you know, yeah, me in a marriage, A, 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 a married gay man. Yeah. Like, you know, hands off my marriage. But anyway, um, here's, here's the, the language, uh, in the resolution. <laughs> it's really choice. Um, quote in accordance with the laws of nature and nature's God, <laughs> the state oh God. of Iowa recognizes the definition of marriage to be the solemnized union between one human biological male and one human biological female. There is a lot in that one. That is <laughs> sentence. Yeah. That that is some thick soup uh. we're wading through. Oh boy. Good grief. This, so intersex people not allowed to get married. No. No, 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 no. no Absolutely and, not. And also, you know, the, the 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 slippery slope argument about people wanting to marry their 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 pets. Um <laughs> that's clearly you know we will be saved from that horror that, that nightmare yep they've made sure that polygamy is excluded yeah um even though it, <laughs> nobody's doing nobody's it nobody's arguing for that yeah so eight legislators have signed on uh as as co-sponsor well the sponsor and then seven co-sponsors and then also at the same time um there's a separate bill which would al- <laughs> this one's amazing which would allow the state's residents to not acknowledge same-sex marriages <laughs> on religious grounds which that's what the federal law that you talked about earlier makes clear you have to right yeah i know or at least like or like i guess an individual person doesn't have to right and that's that is specifically what they're trying to say here because um, it says, uh, let's see, the text also says the state of Iowa also recognizes the deep historical and religious roots that uniformly defined and understood marriage to be the union between one male and female. Therefore, no resident of Iowa shall be compelled, coerced, or forced to recognize any same-sex unions or ceremonies as marriage notwithstanding any laws to the contrary that may exist in other states and no legal action, criminal or civil shall be taken against citizens in Iowa for refusal 
or failure to recognize or participate in same-sex unions or ceremonies. There's so much here that's just wow. like, that. I mean, the second part is just like, nobody ever is saying you have to participate in any, like, like union, ceremony, whatever, no. right? That you don't want. Like, no, but never, never have we said clergy are going to have to be, or they'll be compelled, no matter the, den- the denomination, right? Right. To perform... Marry a gay marriage if a gay couple approaches them. They're what not- about the bakers, Frank? <laughs> right. And so, like, it's just it's absolutely wild. But I just love the idea that you 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 will not be compelled to recognize a same sex union. No, 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 <laughs> no. I do not I, recognize you. Yeah, as I married. just imagine a whole a whole state full of people grumpily arms folded in front of them with a mad look on their face, going, "No, you're not married." Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm married. No, you're not. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, and this is from the sponsor of the bill. Just in case you think we're kind of going too far here. Uh, he says, uh, if they want to call their relationship a marriage, they are free to do so. That is freedom. But by the same token, people who do not define same sex unions as marriage <laughs> must not be forced to do so. <laughs> We're not exaggerating when we say that it's just about a private citizen being able to put their <laughs> fingers in their ears and go, no, 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 oh you're not married. God. You're not. I, I, that may be the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my oh, life. It's amazing. Right now this is, it is important to put this into context. Uh, while this, uh, while that one in particular is absurd, I don't know how many of the 300 other bills that are targeting the LGBT, LGBTQ community uh, this year uh, are absurd or not, but that there are over 300 bills uh, that have been introduced in state legislatures uh, throughout the country in, that specifically are going after the queer community. And um, that's sick. That's, uh, that's pretty, yeah, that's brutal. Not- that's brutal because like, you know, uh, LG, LGBTQ folk, it can be rough out there. And yeah. there are a lot of places in this world where you don't really feel it as much, but then there are other places where you are a target and you're a target by your legislature. Right. Yeah. That it is important to point sucks. out that, uh, this is still a vocal, a loud and ugly minority of americans yeah that think this way that's true too like the majority of americans support gay rights mm-hmm. support gay marriage uh it the, so it's st- this is just a very very loud and obnoxious and scary mm-hmm. minority of people yeah. and also it is important to to remember that um uh, just because a law is proposed doesn't necessarily mean it's going to become a law. True. Uh, and uh, and boy, it behooves all of us to be speaking up when yeah. these things come up and, uh, and and try to get out in front of them because it's 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 just nasty shit. So indeed. All right. Well, to close us off, I'm going to take us to the small sacred town. Of Joshimath, India, or Joshimath, India. Okay. Uh, this is on the on the border of it, it's in, up and in, tucked into the Himalayan mountains, hmm. uh, and it is uh, a revered town, bo- by both Hindus and Sikhs, but mostly Hindus. Hmm. Um, it it brings in pilgrims. It is very important, and because uh, the current uh, government of India is as uh, every bit as much Hindu nationalist as the nutballs in our country are Christian nationalists. <laughs> there has been a push to promote cities like this. Um, this was this was uh, a city where a famous guru became enlightened, according to whomever, and uh, and put up a temple. So like it's it's like a big deal mm. to Hindus, right? So one of the things that they've done is tried to build more infrastructure, including like power, you know, hydropower projects and stuff. Uh, just they're they're just trying, and you know, they're they're throwing up 
big tall buildings and stuff. You know, this was a this was a smallish village hmm. from for a long time, and now they want to promote it. They want to make sure that like Hindu tourism is is uh, is a big and thriving uh, thing. Unfortunately, they they really haven't paid attention to you know good engineering practices. Or oh no, they, they've they've just been working really fast on this. The the whole town's sinking. <laughs> They've ruined the town. Literally, eight hundred and sixty homes oh. have are already ruined, and it's just continuing. Giant buildings are cracking. Oh no! Uh, because uh, they the whole the whole town the whole village was built on like shale that had come down from the mountains. Oh. Oh, and it, okay. it's not a stable. So if you know, if you put you know a few hundred homes in on there, small buildings, mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. But if you change the water table to to provide hydropower, oh wow! And if you like, uh, you know, if you start to drum up tourism business and put in big hotels and stuff, it changes everything. <laughs> and sudden, and now everything is shifting and. N not enough has been done and it's kind of probably too late question mark so the the, the city is sinking and uh <laughs> oh. there's a lot of hindu prayer going on oh to save it. i'm sure i'm sure uh, it's uh gonna be highly effective as well yeah they need to get yeah. some uh hindu engineering <laughs> well yeah exactly it, how prayer. good is how good is shiva <laughs> get krishna in there to uh to better to, to to solidify the ground because um yeah i mean so many religions are built on shaky ground but you shouldn't build the cities of the religions on the shaky ground oh that's so sad oh damn yeah so there you go uh you know it, it it's just a it's a rough time for a holy city the whole concept of holy cities is weird to me don't make a city holy. Then you then you have to then you have to think of it in a different way, and and you can't take steps that you need to take. Yeah, to fix things. Well, what about the poor people who live there? Who wants to live in a holy city? Sounds right? awful. Yeah, everything's all yeah. like all these weird ceremonies and crap are always just allowed or whatnot. Just processions just, every day, gumming up traffic, like things dinging and donging every which uh, way. Just, <sighs> Stay away from the holy cities, my friends. <laughs> I mean, you can go visit. I yeah. went and visited one of the most holy cities in India, mm. and it was fascinating, and I'm very glad I wasn't there the week later because the week afterwards was the big week, and I saw the preparations being made, and oh, my God, it's terrifying. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you would like to tell us about your holy city or chime in about any of the things we've talked about you can write into us podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424-666-8442 stick around there's more show coming up Well, Frank, Dan, uh, there's a fella in Texas, uh, goes by the name of Rick Scarborough, mm. uh, and he's he's a pastor, and uh, but he talks a lot about politics. He is very uh, he he is making politics his business, uh, <laughs> and he, specifically, if you want to know his politics, don't look Republican. He is a Christocrat. Oh, Jesus, uh, self described. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's so different and and completely incompatible with right. being a Republican. Right. Uh, very uh, anti-LGBTQ, obviously, Republican. just all, just sort of all the things that you think of when you think of a pastor involving himself in Texas politics. <laughs> you, you know what you're thinking about. Um, he has a plan. He's uh, I, I believe he's talking to the uh, the Tea Party Women of Texas, some organization, and uh, yeah, here, we'll just hear what he has to say. They went after me as you know, trying to take over the town, uh, trying to take over America. 
And, well, honestly, I was. Uh, but I couldn't say that. I mean, why not take it over for Jesus? 68% of the teachers in Texas by poll, I think it's 68, I wrote it down, now believe that the LGBTQ agenda should be taught and embraced. 68%. We're grooming our children for pedophiles. That's what's happening. Now let me tell you what I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing. And by God's grace, if I can raise the budget and get people behind me, in four years, I want, to, I, want to get, I want to expunge this entire state of every immoral book in the library. Call me a Nazi. Call me a book burner. I've been called worse. I don't think it's a good look when you've been called worse than a Nazi. <laughs> I, I feel like... I feel like that last little sentiment. Yeah, I I don't know that that's a great thing. Rick. Yeah, he has no problem with it though. He's like <laughs> call, call me call me and I don't care. Call me a Nazi because I am. Yeah, oh I mean that's God. just it, right? Like, like, <laughs> oh, you're shit. literally like literally the definitional uh, thing of. What we've all been warned against. <laughs> the f when they come again, when the bad guys come, mm -hmm. they'll want to burn your books. Right. Uh, they'll want to, you know, deny you information. Yeah. To control you. Yep. Uh, and then he just, uh, you know, just says it out loud. Just. And also the the whole, you know. I don't know what poll he was referring to. Probably some Rasmussen poll that, you know, words things. If you ever, by the way, if you guys ever hear anybody quoting a Rasmussen poll, then you know that they're, that it's just right wing propaganda. <laughs> but yeah, I'm guessing a lot of teachers are, what they're saying, what these teachers are saying is, yeah, we should probably prepare these kids for the fact that they will encounter gay people. And that's fine mm -hmm. in the world. And, you know, there's also gay stuff. We have gay students, whether, whether right. you know it or not. Right. right. And you, we'd prefer that they not be, you know, suicidal. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Well, that's Rick great. Scarborough. Shut up, Rick Scarborough, you Nazi. <laughs> and worse than a Nazi. Whatever <laughs> that is. Whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, for, for much better people, we've, we've, we've had some folks call into us, write into us, um, Toodles, I well, I, I, I think Toodles is probably actually not the name. That's not the signature, but just uh, someone saying goodbye to us uh, <laughs> is what I'm guessing. It, I'm going to guess that this is an unsigned email. <laughs> that is their no, it's Toodles. Toodles right now. Sign off. We'll call them Toodles. Right, okay, my, so my 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 cat from when I was seven just uh, <laughs> wrote in. Just wrote in. Yeah. All right. Here's what Toodles has to say. <laughs> Toodles says, <clears throat> I'm going to make an argument for examining your family history as anti-racist action. Did we, we must have talked about, uh, I, I am frequently, I, I frequently say things like, uh, doing your genealogy is, uh, is a silly and worthless. Incident. Oh, I've definitely said that. I think that there's something there's, well, I know what comes to mind for me. There's this, uh, PBS, uh, promo that comes on before some of the stuff that, and it's for ancestry.com. Right. And there's this woman, white woman who's sort of, I want my children to know where they came from. Right. Oh my God. I want them to know that they're, that they come from, uh, explorers and, um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You <laughs> like, you want you want them to know they come from colonialists, right? right? You want them to know that they were the conquerors of North America, right? Like, like chances are you're not <laughs> excited to tell them about your slave owning ancestors, yeah. slave or, owning or Native American killing or like so forth and so on. And that's not or, obviously every white person in America, but there's just something about this woman <laughs> and the way she's talking about it, where I'm like. I'm just, I just, I have this thing and I'm not, and I'm not one to have like a really quick trigger on, 
on for stuff in general like this. But uh-huh. I'm just like racist. <laughs> <laughs> White supremacist. All right. All right. With with that in mind, we'll go on with what Toodles had to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, white people have all the records. Mm. In searching out my own family history and doing the DNA test, I was able to connect a black family with with records that they would not have otherwise had access to. Hmm. And as a result, we're able to trace their own history in a more complete and full manner. Yeah. Uh, and even if you don't have some aspect of your family that can give black families more access to their history, taking a look might surprise you. There are beautiful stories buried in there as well as ugly ones. Hmm. And even the ugly ones you should know because looking at how closely you're connected to those horrors can make you a better person and a better ally. Hmm. I think that's probably true. Yeah. Though, let's be honest. Like we said, most people aren't looking at the for the ugly. And they're going to, you know what right. I mean? They're going to glide gently over yeah. the ugly stuff in hopes of finding like, oh, it's French royalty. Look. Right. My fifth, you know, my 15th great uncle was uh was vaguely related to somebody important yeah, yeah. the the ancestry.com ad is not um i want my children to know they come from nazi sympathizers right right exactly. like <laughs> they come from people who did nothing right while people were being exterminated and i don't know like i and this is i actually like know quite a bit about my family history and so like hearing a line like white people have, you know, control the records or whatnot, um, whatever, uh, Toodles said, um, like that kind of actually like that kind of, I was like, Oh, maybe I'm, I'm very dismissive of this thing that I actually have a lot of access to. Right. Because I can be, and I've never felt the lack of it. And yeah, and uh, and so I, I I appreciate that being pointed out. Um, Absolutely, because like because I mean, especially like growing up, I loved the stories of my ancestors and things okay. that they did. Right, That's like fair. I can I as a child, I really connected with it. Um, as an adult, I'm just I've developed this attitude of like, why the fuck should I care about <laughs> these people? Right, yeah. like you know. But if you don't have it, then I, I can see it being something that's really important to learn about. My, so, my, my question sense. is, when you say white people control uh, the records, do you mean Mormons? Because <laughs> Quite you're not wrong. <laughs> Ancestry.com being, isn't it partially owned by the LDS church? No, or? but they had to partner with the Mormon is, church because the, the most extensive genealogical oh. library in the world Right was uh, was the Mormon. So they gave so the Mormons gave them access to their all of their stuff, and in turn, in return for all of the Mormons getting access for free to ancestry dot com. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, uh, we have a voicemail, don't we? We do indeed, Dan. Um, this is uh, David calling in about uh, our conversation about. Um, the HOV lanes from a couple of weeks ago about High occupancy, the carpool lane, carpool lanes, okay. commuter lanes, whatever you want to call them. And I, he does a fine job telling okay. the story. So this is Dave uh, from Ohio. I was listening to your podcast about the representative that was trying to get the, uh, law changed to allow pregnant women to use the uh, high occupancy, high occupancy vehicle lane. And I understand that, but my under, uh, what I don't understand in states where they uh, could declare this uh, fetus a person, uh, how come they don't immediately get uh, some sort of tax status in terms of a, an extra um, exemption on the state tax forms wherever there's a state tax and they have these particular laws against uh, women having abortions? Uh, just a thought. So I love your show. Good luck. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, if, if they're people, you got to count yeah. them. If, as people yeah if they're and if you're going to be want to be consistent <laughs> which oh there, there's your problem yep. right there frank yep it's they, they don't care about consistency they don't care about consistency and i think it exposes it all as just the big gimmick that it is because if yeah. they were sincere about it if they didn't just see it as like owning the libs or whatnot right like yeah. then uh 
they would they would actually like grant real personhood and all the implications that that have. But um, there was one state that was like people were saying, well, you should be giving us this, right? I kind of remember that now that we're talking about it. I, people have said that. I've huh. heard people make that argument before. But maybe not. I, yeah, Nobody's okay. taken it seriously, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, and we had Kat right into us. Kat says, Dear Frank and Dan, uh, this is in response to the person who wrote in last week about their doctor trying to prescribe church. <laughs> right. Uh, I, have a, I have recently encountered a similar experience in North Carolina. A 16-year-old child in my care, unfortunately, is gravely ill. Hmm. Last week, a hospital staff member took it upon himself to tell a sick teenager that her illness and the previous death of her father are because she doesn't believe in Jesus. Holy shit. The staff member continued to harp on the point throughout the day. Uh, I was absolutely livid, but hesitated to report it because I didn't want the child to suffer repercussions, when it, which, of course, made me more livid. Fortunately, her other guardian was not hesitant. Huh. The staff member was reported and pulled from the case. Obviously, that's no guarantee it would turn out well in your other listener's situation. Right. Uh, I hope it's possible for them to find a new doctor, then report it and or post reviews about their experience. Yeah. Maybe they can save someone else from having to run into that. Yikes, man. <sighs> it just the sheer hairy balls of that act. Yeah. Of saying of telling a person who is sick who has been grieving? Uh, well, that's that's just your fault for uh for not believing. Which, by the way, is even not it's not even theologically sound, right? Like that's not that doesn't even comport with what's biblically written, and yet uh, and 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 yet they inflict this on a kid. That's some man. The bullshit is deep, my friends it's yeah i mean the <laughs> boundaries man right like but that's the thing like they think they're saving people's like souls yeah it's so critically important to them that they like save someone that's a good point they go to church every week and their pastor just harps and harps and harps on you got to get out there you got to get the message yeah. you got to you know you got to witness it's and, and it, yeah and that's not the place, but you know, when that's all they hear and you know, they, they think that their immortal soul is, is on the line. Right. Oh God. It's such, it's, it's infuriating. All right. Let's, let's get off of the infuriation and on to something much nicer, which is the thought of people being generous to us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, yeah. And, uh, we do have some new patrons this week, Dan, oh, over lovely. on Patreon. Um, we have uh, a new teacher by the name of Terry Says. Oh, um, wonderful. And we have a new priest by the name of Daniel. A, a fine, handsome name. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank Amazing. You. This, is, this is how we, we keep doing the show. Um, and it's the only the, way we keep doing the show. <laughs> we literally, it's, it's our only, uh, means of, of, of continuing. So we appreciate you so much. Yeah. And if you'd like to join them, you can go to our website. Thank God I'm atheist.com and, uh, click on the support tab and it'll show you some options. So, yeah. uh, and as always, Dan, we have our top donor to thank our Lord and savior, Austin, more show coming up. Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. It is the Lenten season, as it were. Um, a, a season which was never important to us as uh, as believing Mormons. No, Mormons but the, do um, I had teachers in high school who always somehow worked it way its way into classroom assignments. Interesting. Uh, in particular, my French teacher, who it was sort of cultural, right? Because right, the, right. The French are so Catholic. And uh, which is actually true. Um, and so we would have to give up something for Lent. Okay. <laughs> <In class. laughs>
What 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 French class thing does one give up for Lent? I gave up baguettes one... for oh, for Lent. Oh, that's it's quite a sacrifice. <laughs> quite a sacrifice. I'm sure I knew the sentence how to say right. that once in very broken and horrible high school English. <laughs> uh, je sure give up baguette pour Lent. Um, I'm, I'm sh- and I'm sure some smart ass kid was like, "I give up homework for Lent." Ha 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 ha. Right. Um, but no, the, like we've talked about Lent before, but what we wanted to kind of get to this time is like, why does this idea of giving things up resonate so much with human beings? And if you, uh, think I'm, I'm, I'm just grasping at straws, there is of course the very popular trend of intermittent fasting, right? Uh, right now there is this idea that giving up something for a period of time or regularly is good for you. Now there is some medical evidence that fasting is, has actual benefits, but like it, the idea itself is what I'm talking about and how it resonates. And it's like, Oh yeah, giving up something has to be good for me. Or virtuous in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Any diet, you know what I mean? It's not like there's something that, that our, especially American society. Oh my God. Just reveres. If you're on a diet, if you're doing something that's difficult, it it doesn't have to be like diet related. It, if you're, you know, like I have a friend who literally went on a week long, maybe two, it might've been two weeks, a retreat where he, he took a vow of silence for that whole time. And it was like what? this meditation retreat, Whoa, which is about as extreme as Americans will get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but like, no lifelong commitment to silence. <laughs> no, but like, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know, when, when you say it, people go, people don't react with like, what the fuck? Why? They react with, Ooh, wow. That is impressive. Yeah. Because we have this thing i think most of us have this thing in us where self denial mm-hmm. uh is inherently considered impressive and good mm. like you know it's, what i mean like shows there's self control just... shows restraint shows yeah. you are the master of yourself of your body right mm. you are you are in control and that's the thing we so often are we fall victim to our own very human quote unquote lack of control. Right. Right. Um, I cannot tell you the number of times I've walked into a gas station just to use the restroom. And I walk out with a bag of Doritos. (laughs) The marketing works. No, it's the, they're delicious and I I can't get them out of my head. Right. Um, (laughs) but I did, yeah, I mean, I th- and I think that one of the things that's interesting to me about this, because what we're talking about on some level is asceticism. Mm, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? We're talking, people revere monks mm-hmm. who, or, or, you know, nuns who go into a life of, you know, they voluntarily submit their, themselves to a life of deprivation and, uh, you know, they don't have the creature comforts and they don't have, you know what I mean? And people find that to be very impressive. And, uh, and suddenly these people have wisdom and some of them probably have some wisdom, but we assign that idea to them regardless of whether we've actually tested the theory or not Mm. of the, you know, the theory that they are wise, the theory that they have something uh, special to offer in terms of uh, the you know the discourse. Well, why would going without something imbue you with wisdom? I mean, look, I'm a fan of trying shit, trying new shit in my life. I'm a fan of challenging myself in a new way just to see what shakes loose, mm-hmm. just to see what what's happening. So I think that there is some value in that. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. I, I I do. I think that there's something there's something to that. But when you hold on to it as though it is inherently uh 
good or inherently wisdom provoking or inherently anything, not taking into account the fact that all humans are different and respond to different stimulus uh, in different ways. I just don't, I just don't buy it. I don't know. I buy it to, I like, I'll take it to, to certain levels. And I certainly, you know, certainly, as you said, you know, there's, there's science that shows that things like, um, you know, meditation can mm. be mm -hmm. beneficial and stuff. And that, you know, you could consider that a self-denial, you know, you're, you're, you're not on your phone. <laughs> you're literally trying to do something and it's hard. It, you yeah. know, when people start meditating, uh huh, that's rough. That's not easy. Yeah. Um, well, so, you know, maybe there's something to that. Yeah. And they're, they're, I mean, I, I don't know how solid the science is or whatnot, but there's a lot that is sort of science-y about fasting, right? And I know mm -hmm. people who have done intermittent fasting that have had, you know, really nice results. They're, they're getting the results they want from it, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think about it and I'm just like, I, I don't know, like, I, I, I couldn't possibly, right? <laughs> um, but like, it's, uh, yeah, it, for, for me, it's just this idea of like, of, of it just always goes back around to like wow that person is is really uh they've got a lot of restraint they've got a lot of willpower like and it's these things that we just attribute such positive you know things to well um, and what's funny about that is that the actual truth is likely to be that that person is prone to that kind of willpower mm, you know what i mean it just possibly. has that as one of their personality traits it comes easier to them than it comes to the rest of us. Right. We're all impressed because they're doing it and we couldn't do it. Right. But like, okay, there's shit that I can do that they can't do. Right. Yeah, I but know. Yeah, I, it, it's I, it's like know, people this, who give up gluten. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, wow, I, I'll just, I would deal with an upset stomach. Like, <laughs> I just would. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it, like I'm nice. sorry. Like, Wait, you're asking me to give up what? <laughs> Sorry, bread? Did you I just mean, say it's, bread? It's fucking bread, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I'm not giving up bread. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. You know, that same friend that I, that I told you about that, that did the, the vow of silence thing. That's wild. He also posted a thing very recently, actually, on Facebook, where he said, uh, where he proposed the idea that he liked, he liked the idea of uh, secular monasteries where hmm. people would go and, you know, sort of do the thing of monasteries where, where they have some sort of philosophical work mm. that is to be done. And then also like some sort of charitable work that's to be done as well hmm. and have it not connected to any religious whatever, but, but a place, and I can see him being exactly the kind of person and, you know, he sort of described what he imagined. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and it was kind of quasi ascetic and it's like, you know, you, you just live, you know, a, a poverty lifestyle that's, that's very spare and blah, blah, blah. It, liberals already have this. It's living off the grid, right? Like it's, it's. Yeah, I suppose so. Right. Like these, these people who go, they, they, they solar panel the fuck out of some cabin somewhere and live and commune with nature and uh you know yeah go out and i don't know isn't it i mean i and guess conservatives insights. do that too but in a, more of a prepper sort of way. <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> the liberals go off the grid to like um commune with nature and you know but you gotta be conservatives careful, go can't... off the grid to shoot nature so <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> my response to this guy, to my friend's post about the secular, was, was basically, you had me at secular monasteries. I think that's kind of interesting. You lost me on this, on, on just prescribing asceticism. Because hmm. that just, all, all you're doing is taking the religious model yeah. and applying it non-religiously. Where are the hedonistic monasteries those used to you know, exist you know what i mean like why why can why can insight only be gained 
through uh, through self denial? What about indulgence? What about massive indulgence? Yeah, I know some very interesting people who gained a lot of insight in their uh, in their crazy party years. Yeah. Well, Dan, it's it's not that there's one right way or wrong way of doing any of these things because I mean, like this idea of taking something that has been developed and maybe even you know refined through the 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 centuries by religious groups right the, taking it and being like there's something good here and we could benefit from x practice that's in this but it's all, the people who are going to benefit from it from asceticism that's not obviously that's not you right like this doesn't speak <laughs> to you right yeah but it speaks to your friend <laughs> Right. Totally. And there are probably plenty of other people for, you know, that, that, that do kind of hear that and go, wow. Right. Because yeah. you and I have had the conversation of how much we wish there were um, essentially cathedrals for the nonbelievers. A hundred percent. And places of contemplation. Right. That, that That's and that's different from what your friend's talking about. But it is, again, these the, the we see in the tradition of Christianity, you know, and this development of these grand cathedrals, right? We see yeah. something of inspiration and value that speaks to, you know, quote unquote, our souls, right? Um, yeah. You probably won't use that word, but like it speaks to us deeply, right? We find Absolutely. something in that. And every, for every, it's going to be different for there. There was a lot of those different, different things out there that, that, that resonated during somebody's practice of of religion maybe right or something that they've heard about and it just clicks and they're like yeah i want to go and not talk to anyone for two weeks that sounds amazing right i like it you know i i think part one of the things that you're hitting on is the idea that there may be some baby in all of this bath water mm, mm -hmm. and we can you know we we are free to take things that we like in a religion mm -hmm. and play around with it. Why not? People so maybe, started doing it for some reason. Yeah. Right. So maybe figure out a way that Lent means something to you if you're that kind of a person. If it gels with you, if it jives with you, give something up for 40 days. See what happens. Nah. I don't know. I'm That's okay. interesting. <laughs> Not you, Frank. Uh. <laughs> Obviously, you can't give anything up. That would be impossible. Uh, but yeah, talking about else, hedonism. Like, <laughs> <laughs> never has there been a more hedonistic. You literally human. were describing to me earlier today about the duck that you're going to be preparing for dinner tonight. So, uh, <laughs> you're it. Oh, you're it's so you're hedonistic it. to eat duck, Dan. <laughs> I anyway. like food, Dan. Yeah. I, I want you to like food. I enjoy that you like food. Please enjoy your food. And I'm roasting uh, a duck because I like yeah. food. Yeah. Uh, the point is, I, I think I think one of the points here is everybody's fucking different. Yeah. And one of the th and that's one of the failures of religion is that mm -hmm. they don't treat everyone as different. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to create boxes in which everyone is meant to fit, and it never works. Yeah, that's exactly. And the other right. thing is. Go ahead and do whatever, you know, if you see a religious practice that uh, appeals, grab it. Yeah. See what happens. Wash the God off of it. Yeah. You know. Spray it down. <laughs> Maybe get some Lysol. Yeah. And also, like, modify it mm. as much or as little as you want. Mm -hmm. go, go ham on it. Go crazy changing it up until it's what you need it to be and it serves you. Mm. I like that. All right. All right. Well... If you would like to tell us about the religious practices that you have taken on, uh, or if you'd like to tell us about the ones that you're giving up for Lent, please feel free to write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call us, tell us about it. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah! Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and click that like button. And if you'd like to join one of our members-only lounges, they're awesome communities, you can go to our website and uh, find some links to go to those places and join them. Thankgodimatheist.com slash members only. 
Thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. We sure do appreciate you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.